And you're still watching Joy News. And a few minutes ago, the Appointments Committee of Parliament finished vetting the Bunahafu Regional Minister designate lawyer Kweku Tremi. And two major points he made uh, during his vetting he said that uh, he will ensure that there is incentive for the youth in the country so that they would go into agriculture. And he also talked about the need to develop the tourism sector in his region. A lot of areas in his region that serve as tourism sites would have to be developed and more investments need to go into such areas so that they make lots of money there. Very shortly, we will turn to Parliament when the second person appears before the appointments committee. But we do know that two more are yet to appear before the committee. These include Kwabena, they are Kwabena Duncan, and then uh, Salifu Saeed. Salifu Saeed is the Northern Regional Minister designate. Keep watching Joy News. Let's go back to Parliament where Kwamena Duncan, Minister designate for the Central Region, is currently before the Appointments Committee to be vetted. The Virginia Commonwealth Court Hall. Jama, yes. I see. Did you see my epithet there? <laughs> that I was president of Cold Hall. Yes, Mr. Chairman, yes. Yeah. Sharp, 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 sharp. <laughs> no, and then add the other one. Then hold your. Hold your. Mr. Chairman, yes. Uh, I'll hold your leg that we will do the holding after we leave here. But the truth stands. <laughs> the truth, naturally, you know, we always stand. <laughs> He says he did national service. I can't find it. <laughs> where, where is it on your TV? You just said it. Otherwise, I was going to ask you, did you do national service? Please, Chairman. Chairman, uh, before I let me welcome, I, Kwame Duncan, my this year, uh, President, just for elegance, education background is done very well. But if you travel through page two, my wish would have been that the academic qualifications were just brought as a third layer in order for elegance of your CV. Do you have an objection? So that we know that 19 uh, 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 Anumabu, the qualification follows. Uh, o level it follows university it follows even though you have chosen to put it on the second page for elegance one would have preferred that it followed as a column do you have an objection well mr chairman i'm at your direction actually you didn't follow the template we gave you it was supposed to be date education institution and certificate or degree awarded so when we have gone through will let you resubmit in accordance with the template we gave you. The information here is adequate, but it has to be represented in the format we gave you. Chair, 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 Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Oh, no, you're right, Chair. Uh, on the last page, you have playing droughts and watching comedies. Meanwhile, you did crop science, and you were a patron for wildlife club in the school, and you didn't choose to make, I mean, watching birds, wildlife, wildlife <laughs> as your hobby. Why? <laughs> Mr. Chairman, you, you, need to be, you need to be versatile. It's not only uh, your background where your interests must be focused. But again, uh, if there are other things that you can do, and uh, in my spare time, I uh, play a lot of drafts, and also, and uh, when I'm relaxed in my hall, I like to watch comedies. But it does not in any way take uh, my interest also in wildlife. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chairman, the nominee fails to provide residential address. Would you furnish this committee with that? Not now. Once you yield to the chairman, and probably let me do my last and yield at chairman's pleasure to the Honorable Kujetu. Ten years at primary school, Anglican basic school, 1972 to 1982. Any explanation? That's correct. The whole system, from 72 class 1 right through to form 4, 
middle school. Yes. Okay, Mr. Mr. Chairman. On the same issue, on the same issue. How many years were you at Asimanso, and how many years were you at Kabuchui? Asimanso, two years, from one, from two, transferred to Kabuchui in 1984. Six years, yes. Uh, in 1988, I was involved in a tragic motor uh, accident and was hospitalized for more than one year and came back strongly to be able to do the A-level. Okay. Mr. Chairman, thank you very much and congratulations, Mr. Kwamina Duncan. Uh, during your introduction by His Excellency the President, we were informed that you are anterior Rebecca's favorite, uh, Her Excellency the First Lady's favorite radio commentator. So congratulations for all those accolades. But page two of your CV under employment history, do we have your permission to carry out the following amendments? I don't think you will argue that being patron of Ghana Wildlife Association, patron of Infancy Film Horticulture Club, patron of Writers and Debaters Club, uh, employment. I don't think you argue that this, these are uh, employment credentials. Uh, do, can, we, can we take that out and preferably put them under leadership positions held? Well, are Chairman, you okay with that? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I've already indicated that I'm at your direction. Okay. And uh, leadership positions held, when you resubmit, Kindly let us have the name of the schools for, you only have assistant school prefect, and there is a blank uh, assistant school prefect again, 78 and 82, there is a blank. So kindly let us have that. Then we have difficulty with the way you also indicate the years. You only have 88 stroke 89, vice president, national service personnel association, 90 stroke 91, what, what are you trying to communicate? Is it 1988 to 1989, or is it the 1988-89 academic year? No, service year. You, you have that running through apart from Yes, 88-89 service, service year. That was a SIS form. Then you have uh, your University of Ghana SRC as a committee is the same. Just follow our format, please, for clarity, okay? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, on page three of your CV, you member in Fansimam District Assembly. In some instances, in Fansimam is spelled with an I, other instances is with an E. What, what is correct? You were in the District Assembly, so educate us. Mr. Chairman, the spelling is E, Fansimam. Thank you. You also have member Ghana at 50 committee, but you have 2006 and not 2007. Can you explain? Uh, yes, uh, the committee got set up uh, in 2006 before the proper celebration in 2007. So when it was constituted at the regional level, that's where I was uh, made a member of the regional committee for the uh, anniversary. So please, when you resubmit, you notice there that you have not given us the duration. You only have 2006. So in this case, you need to give us 2006 to 2007. And you have several other instances, the regional campaign team, uh, MPP Central Region, PRO, and all of those things. So let's have the durations when you resubmit, uh, just for our records. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Page four of your CV, if you come along with us, you have a number of uh, abbreviations, so many of them. Uh, when you resubmit, please indicate what they stand for. You have WRC, you have FNS, you have GII, you have IDEC, THLDD. This is a house of records, so we don't want to make uh, any assumptions. Kindly uh, let us have them. And then you take a look at your conferences attended, Johannesburg. Just uh, take a second look at the spelling. But it's not clear. Johannesburg Bilateral Commission of South Africa, South Africa. Then no date. What exactly is this? Did you work in the South African Electoral Commission? Can you please explain what is happening? No, the Electoral Commission of South Africa 
uh, give an invitation to our party. Uh, in fact, that conference was to be attended by the national chairman then, uh, Mr. Peter McMenu. And uh, he said that um, as a way of growing all of us up, uh, he was going to uh, nominate me to go and represent the party. And so uh, that's what happened. Just for the clarity, it is democracy and democratic development in Africa, which happened in Johannesburg, is that right? That's right. Uh -huh. So it's part of the first one. Oh, Chairman, get his take. You agree that we need to improve that portion of your CV? Mr. Chairman, I've already indicated that I'm at the direction of, the, of, the, of your venerable and committee. Chairman, just on our Okujato, Central Regional Secretary Aspirant, I know that sometimes it's success which is reported. Were you successful? I see you reporting even being an aspirant. Well, Mr. Chairman, at the first attempt, uh, I, failed. I failed in that bit. Uh, but it is also at, at not out of place to capture it, that it will be a constant reminder that at a point in time we made the effort and you couldn't succeed. Uh, so it's a win and lose journey. You may say it. Uh. <laughs> so, Mr. Chairman, on your last page, just... Uh, uh, when you resubmit, just take a look at your draft spelling and uh, watching comedy movies, I believe you want to indicate. Um, but finally, uh, you have stated that you remain a teacher of Infancipim School. Uh, are you able to share with this committee what your plans are? Will you be holding on to that position? Will you seek some leave? Will you resign outrightly from the Ghana Education Service? What will you do about that current position you hold? Uh, well, Mr. Chairman, I think that I need to move on. And therefore, uh, already when His Excellency the President uh, mentioned my name, I, the following day I went to the office of the headmaster and uh, informed him of the news and also told him that I had begun to engage him. So first and foremost, uh, I'm disengaging from teaching activities in the school, and then the second stage will be to formally resign from the Ghana Education Service. Are you considering re resign, resigning or leave of absence? We could ask for politics. A very interesting tomorrow is not elected or is an appointment. If you if you displace the first lady with a tank message and in the evening you don't survive, you probably will have to go back to the classroom. So will you be asking for leave of absence or resignation? Well, uh, Mr. Chairman, I think that this is um, <clears throat> a good advice to uh, uh, I mean, uh, he's a uh, whole president, and uh, I take that advice in good faith. And uh, my view is, is that uh, it should be a cushion for me in the event that a thing like that happens, then I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Honorable Nomi, I'm taking you to page two, where you, you stated that you did your national service in the year 1991. Is that correct? 1991. That's right. That's when I did A-level service. A-level service. That's right. 1991. That's right. But when we come to page one, you left Infancy School in 1990. And in 91, you were in University of Ghana. I, I left 89-90. I should have left 99. As, as, as I said, I was involved in a motor traffic accident. And therefore, I delayed a year. And so I had to repeat uh, low access. And so I left upper uh, 90, 90, yes, June. And then moved on to do my, moved on to do my service, uh, yes. My question is that, pay the CV before us. That's right. You completed infancy film school in 1990. And in 91, you went to University of Ghana. That's you correct. You have also indicated on page 2 that 1991, you did national service. Is it possible? Oh, probably then that, that, that might be a mistake. 
mistake. Check. Do you have a copy? No, I don't have. Or do you have uh, your national service certificate here? All of them. So that here. you can refer to the names. All of them are here. And be accurate. And uh, chairman, this is just for purpose of improving it. And uh, nominee have been humble enough to defer to your good self. This real assembly, 2002 to 2006, social services education subcommittee. We are assuming that the district assembly probably was inaugurated at a certain period. If we just say 2002, and I'm aware that in January there was no district assembly, how could you be a member of its education or social services subcommittee? It will be useful next time as a prelude that you indicate to us in this period, the month, uh, so that uh, actions done before you got there, we are not mistaken to associate you with it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well noted. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the A-level service is 1990-91, and the university service is 94-95. Uh, these, are, these are the records. Um, we are ready to go in. The ranking member wants to start. Chairman, Will I, Kwame Duncan, share with us his vision for the central region of Ghana as minister designate? And may he also indicate to us whether he has since not been playing a role in an acting capacity as regional minister and the justification for his presence and action? Uh, that whether I've been playing a role as in my capacity as acting regional minister. Well, uh, uh, President mentions your name, and uh, that is not the end of the story. You need to appear before this uh, venerable committee for them to decide on your fate. So until that is done, and the whole considers it, uh, you can't uh, proceed to acting in your capacity as uh, acting regional minister. So I haven't done so. Except that I've been going to the regional coordinating council for purposes of appearing before you and to be able to uh, tell you things about the region uh, to get briefed, uh, but not in a single action have I acted in any capacity as a, as a acting minister. Thank you. Your vision for the region, what must we look up to in the next few and couple of years as you are head of administration for that administrative region, central region? Well, Mr. Chairman, uh, the central region, in making our country has a major role in there. Uh, the first, that's the point where we came into contact with the, with the white. And uh, with this contact, we had ca uh, the castle schools and the castle uh, Christian services, and we spread across. And today we have uh, schools all over plus uh, spread of Christianity. They were also very a pioneer in terms of uh, legal education, where you have Mesa Saba as uh, the pioneer in uh, the legal profession. Uh, uh, so it's played its role, especially you are talking about uh, agitations for uh, our own independence, which began with uh, Panty Confederacy and then also uh, Aboriginal Rights Protection Society. Those were the precursors and uh, laying the foundations, eventually uh, making the nationalist movement uh, get the necessary fire to enable us to come how far we have come. Uh, but Mr. Chairman, if you look at the region as we speak today, uh, it has continued to carry a tag, a tag of being the fourth poorest region after uh, Upper West, Northern, Upper East, then comes uh, the Central region consistently for 20 years now, when the Ghana Statistical Service did the Ghana Living Standard Survey and placed that tag on us, we have not been able to wiggle out of it. And so, uh, is it going to be the normal thing that uh, ministers are nominated, they appear before the committee, they get a blessing, and then they go in, and still we remain the fourth poorest. It's important that we look at the things that will 
uh, make us break out of this jinx. And my view, Mr. Chairman, taking a look at the resource base of the region, uh, you have the coastal end, and then you also have the rural end. The rural end, we are lucky we fall. I don't remember. Uh, your rural end is where? The, the coastal belt. There's this divide which the uh, forest people don't like. And your, <laughs> your, 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 please choose another word from rural, please. The forest belt. Forest belt. And Mr. German, a lot of crops do well. A lot of them. If you take uh, Himalua Dentra through to Chufue Timukwa, right through to Densha upper, upper, Densha West, Densha East, then down through Asin North, Asin Central, Asin South, through parts of Abu Asebu Kwamakasi, and then Ejuma Kwenye Nesiam, Esikuma Dobin Brakwa, right through to the Agunas, Agunas East and West. These are all areas that do quite well. Echama, in, they do well in what? They do well in agricultural uh, production. Specific, and, specific. Which, yes. Uh, and what is your intention to help them do it better? Yes. Mr. my view is this, that for all this while they have remained at the subsistence level. There's the need for us, and we will make strong representations to His Excellency the President, that it, we cannot continue in this mode where a region and some regions are tagged as poor, and we as a nation are unable to do anything about that. So we will make strong representations to His Excellency President that if we could have a certain deliberate attempt at attracting, attracting, attracting uh, large-scale investment into the agricultural sector, probably some uh, tax holidays, tax holidays for people to want to come and invest in the in the in the in the in the, in the region. If that is done. We will have the backward and forward linkages. So, and just tax holidays to come and do what? What to, will you yes, do tax invest, holidays for? To, see, Mr. Chairman, it's are you investing been, in ceramics? You are investing in agri business. You are investing in food production. We want specifics. Yes, Mr. Chairman, if you take our way of development, it's been over and above our head. Accra, Kumasi, uh, Takradi, and we—that's what has been termed as the triangular development. And we are in the in the stomach of that triangle. We share borders in the north with the uh, Ashanti region, and then uh, eastern region, and then the west with western region, east Greater Accra. Investors always look to where there's uh, high purchasing capacity, and then also income levels are quite good. Within our region, it's not like that. So there must be a deliberate effort to direct investment in there. And if you come to the region, you don't have local incentives. So that is why I'm asking, or oh, we will do the representation to president, that look, we need to lift, lift this region and add us up. So if we could... Uh, chairman, I'm done, but uh, probably since uh, my colleague would be aware that even SADICOM was established to facilitate the economic development of the central region, and he probably too is well aware Tax incentives from Nkrumah through President uh, uh, Buzi Achampong, through President Rollins, to uh, President Kufo, J.A. Mills, President Mahama. There has been promise of free tax holidays and incentives. It has not worked. What are your plans to ameliorate the poverty that you referred to with your statistical reference for Central Region? Poverty amelioration. What's your strategy? Well, uh, Mr. Chairman, the fact that over the years uh, that attempt hasn't worked doesn't mean that we should throw our hands in despair. Uh, uh, there's a saying that where you see the blacksmith hitting and hitting, it's because it's not shaped up well. And so I come in that the way to go is to get large investment in there. But that notwithstanding, uh, there's a CEDICOM, Central Regional Development Commission, that is in there to do promotion and facilitation of uh, small and medium scale uh, developments. As Regional Minister, if, you, if I'm privileged to have your, your nod, I'm going to uh, uh, get them to do even more. There's the need also for them to advertise, to tell people that these are the things that you can find if you decided to come uh, to the region. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, if your, your, your Venerable Committee gives me the nod, I'm going to open my eyes more and work 
uh, with uh, the Central Regional Development Commission to ensure that uh, uh, the facilitation, the promotion that they need to do, they are able to do it. Thank you. Uh, Honorable Regional Secretary, I know you are very literally gifted, but I would advise that at this committee you are as short and precise as possible so that we will save you time. Uh, because anything that is not clear will follow or attract follow up. So I will remind that this is not a Duma official. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he knows where he is. <laughs> so, uh, how many are from Central Region? Like, only Barbara. Okay, so Barbara, I'll start with you. George, you, you are not permitted to ask a question. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair, and congratulations, Mr. Duncan. We are so proud of you. Sincerely, I would like to use this opportunity to thank him. He was so instrumental in my campaign. Yes, very instrumental, and I would like to say a very big thank you. The Cent Cape Coast is considered the citadel of education. We are proud of the schools that we have. We have Wesley Girls Infant Swim School, where you are teaching, St. Augustine's College, Infant Swim, at the Saddle, and so many of them. But it's unfortunate to state that we have few of the indigents in such schools. And I think it's a burden, a headache on all of us. What will you do if you were sworn in to help encourage our young people to make use of the opportunity we have as a region? Thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think that the observation is well, well placed and well founded. Uh, if you did a study of uh, students in uh, the schools in Central Region, you find out that uh, just a little percentage of our own are there, and it's important that as um, authorities we do what is within our reach to uh, assist them. Uh, we will, if uh, I'm privileged to have the nod, we will put uh, a committee together to institute, institute some awards, especially within the districts, and if schools perform. And uh, let me quickly supply you this statistics. Now, just last year, 2016, 48,000 of basic students were presented. Before they even got into the examination room, 3,000 had already fallen off. And uh, the explanation there is that pregnancy, uh, teenage pregnancy. Out of the 45,000, out of the 45,000 that was, that was presented, eh, only 300 could make aggregate sex. Only 300. And uh, information was also that these are paid for uh, students uh, that came from the private schools. So that if you're talking about the public schools, the status is quite scary. That uh, 13,000 had beyond 37. That's a beautiful way of saying that, I mean, uh, let me not proceed. So there's a real problem with our public school system. And so the way to go is to encourage the assemblies, because their business, to ensure that the kids in there are supported. So the assemblies themselves should be able to encourage the schools, encourage teachers by way of some incentives, awards. And then we at the regional level, we seek to coordinate all of that. I'm a good product. I'm a fine product of uh, the elementary system. And here I am. So I'm a, I come as a good, a good example to tell them. So I'm going to lead that campaign to ensure that uh, our, our young people get access and go higher up. Thank you very much, Mr. Duncan. Uh, that leads to my next question. The central region, again, is a hub of tourism. And Cape Coast, specifically, can boast of a lot of tourist attractions. We have the castles, we have Kakum, and so many other tourist sites. What will you do? Well, it's not in Cape Coast, but close to Cape Coast, in a way. What can we do to enhance, or what will you do to enhance tourism as um, the regional minister, if you're sworn in? Thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, tourism, indeed, is, a, is, a, is a what I call the leading uh, sector uh, in the central region. Unfortunately, 
the revenue generation that must come to be able to stimulate and generate the necessary economic activities is not there. You have many of these tourists that do a day trip programs. They only visit the Cape Coast Castle, Limna Castle, and uh, instead of staying on to spend more for it to trickle down, it doesn't happen. They make the trip and get back. And so it's important also that we advertise to get in people to want to come and then uh, invest in the hospitality industry. We should be able to be having uh, the five-star hotels in there. If we are able to attract individuals to come and establish these uh, uh, high-level, high-grade facilities, then tourists will not simply come and then visit the site and then leave. And so as uh, regional minister, I'm privileged to have the nod of this venerable committee. Those are the things that I'm going to focus on. Uh, Chairman Soy, so is a nominee suggesting to this committee that tourists don't sleep because you have a deficit in terms of the hotel facilities? Is that what you are suggesting in response? Or there are several other factors accounting for that? Mr. Uh, Chairman, not deficit, but the standards. Uh, we would wish to have more. Uh, if we had many, then the variety would be there for them to choose from. Uh, so it's not per se deficit, but again, there are other places where access and even uh, utilities are not available in those areas. And so when they come, the encouragement is not there for them to stay on. So these are some of the factors. So what will you do to extend utilities to those areas? What are your plans? Well, Mr. Chairman, as uh, the uh, regional minister, if, you, if I'm privileged to have your, your, your note, uh, it is for me to invite the regional director of the electricity company and to come brief me so far about their plans and then also uh, to see how far the Ghana water and then the community water sanit sanitation agencies, what is it that they have, their, uh, they have on their table so that with the little way that I have as regional minister, I can add on and push on so that these places some integrated development of uh, these facilities to enable uh, visitors when they come uh, to sleep rather than going back from where they came from. Thank you very much, Mr. Duncan. Um, my last question is on unemployment. This, of course, is a national issue, but I'm sure that if you assume work, you will be confronted with the issue of unemployment. And I would want to know, how are you going to address that? Well, as I indicated, Mr. Chairman, as I indicated earlier, CEDICOM is already doing uh, promotion and facilitation of small and medium scale uh, enterprises. Uh, but luckily, uh, our government, through our party's manifesto, uh, promised the entire country that if we got elected into office, uh, we're going to embark uh, on a serious program of uh, uh, getting every district at least a factory uh, based on the resource uh, uh, allocations in that area. And uh, we will be, con will be continuing to push to ensure that the 20 districts of the region uh, are fairly served. And uh, if we're able to get that, then we will succeed in getting employment for some of our youth. Thank you very much, Mr. Chen, and congratulations once again. Thank you. Sorry, before I come to you. Um, okay, I just came in, so let me have one chance. Thank you very much, Chairman, and let me also congratulate you, Mr. Kwame Duncan, on your nomination by His Excellency the President. You just um, discussed the central region in terms of its poverty. A week, about two weeks ago, we, we had a, a vetting exercise here for the minister who will be responsible for uh, the creation of the additional regions and he brought us a map showing the incidence of poverty across the country. What was striking was a revelation that in the Upper West, 
um, in the war municipality, incidents of poverty had reduced significantly relative to the rest of the region. And it appeared to me that what really accounted for that is the sighting of UDS, uh, which attracts students who come from across the country, bring in resources, so services to the university and other things have provided income earning opportunities. People bring money anytime they come to school and go back. Central region has had University of Cape Coast, then we had Winneba, then you have the best high schools, if I may say, in the region. Um, how would you use the resources that education as a commodity that Central Region now provides to the rest of the country as a catalyst to promote the development of Central Region? We tend to just see the schools, we come, bring our children, they go back after vacation, but there are so many services that should be rendered in terms of feeding. How are you going to ensure that the food served in the schools come from the region so that there will be linkage in terms of farmers and, and etc. Uh, many things that schools will need. How would you integrate that to ensure a region-wide development founded on education as a commodity that central region offers to the rest of the country? Because that's, that's the only way that you can make sure that education has a multiplier effect on the development of your region. So how would you ensure the integration? I'm just elaborating, but how would you ensure the, the, the integration? Well, Mr. Chairman, I think that the uh, Honorable Member has been magnanimous also to give me the responses. Uh, uh, in our case, it's been seasonal. When the students are in there, yes, you have uh, uh, taxi drivers able to convey students from university campus to town. Uh, you have uh, uh, those who cook, go to sell, uh, and then those who come to sell their commodities, and, and so on and so forth. If you come to the senior schools, it's the same. They troop to town, they go to spend, and all of that. All of that is seasonal. Uh, but uh, with the point he has raised, I think that maybe probably we haven't done the necessary forward and backward linkages. And so as a minister, uh, quickly I would have to have the heads of all these schools uh, meet around the table so that we do some, in terms of their procurement, you may not be able to tie their hands, but if you make the appeal to them that we are all uh, partners in development, that if we're procuring, you're procuring the gary and the maize and the rest of them, take it in the kinky, take it from, from within. In so doing, you help build uh, the, the region. So, uh, 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 Honorable Member, your, your suggestions were taken. Honorable mm. Kujo. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, Honorable Minister Designate, as I sit here, I've been thinking so hard, so far as the region is concerned, because it's like um, one region that I think we have everything it takes to uplift it, yet something is not working. Um, would you avert your mind to the one district, uh, one factory, or one factory, one district project, and then uh, look at what um, pineapple processing, that is fruit, fruit processing, because I know pineapples grow there a lot, and um, oranges grow there a lot, and yet we have hotels across the country Important, we're importing all these. Focus on in this area. Would you avert your mind to that? Yeah, thanks, Mr. Chairman. I think that I've already uh, made mention of the one district, one factory, but averting further to uh, that point. Yes, uh, I told you that many of our districts do well in the production of uh, uh, orange, and uh, you know, orange uh, from research is the most demanded uh, fruit juice all around the world. And so uh, for us, we are a very good candidate of this uh, policy of the government of one district, uh, one factory. And so we will add all the necessary weight that must be added. Thank you. Uh, 
Um, just in the context of same question, I would avert your mind to uh, what is a sea gold short, because I know from Yeyano down to Elmina, the at the um, atmosphere is good for the conditions are good for short winning. I would avert your mind to that, and the kind of beaches you have. I will just cite one example: the white sand. That's that area. Please, please, um, in this context of thinking about the poverty, okay, avert your mind to putting business men together to really look at the feasibility of helping you develop the region. That's a piece of advice, not a question. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, well noted. I'm aware of your You do only two questions. If... Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Honorable nominee, in responding to a question posed by the minority leader, you sought to create the impression that ministers come, they are vetted, they go until poverty is with the central region. And you were asked, what do you intend doing differently, differently, to redeem your people from poverty? What three specific interventions do you intend to do differently to redeem them from poverty? Well, Mr. Chairman, uh, when I said that, it was not intended in any way to uh, whittle down uh, my predecessors uh, appearing here, only emphasizing the point that all this while the problem continues to persist, and there must be a way to break the back of this problem. And so uh, if you ask me uh, differently, I said that we will make strong case. Now, Mr. Chairman, uh, it, it's a deep, deep, deep term. Uh, make a strong case that we need to lift these four regions, even though I'm here, but we are colleagues. We have stayed down there for a very long time. We need to make a strong case to the president that all regions must be seen to be doing well. It can never be that a region will continue to carry this tag for more than 20 years. So investment, investment, investment. And that a way to get people coming in there, give them the, 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 if you give them the tax holidays, in a way, you fetch it back because you lift the people out of poverty. So that is one. And then two, education. Education, as I said, if our people are literate, a lot of things will turn around. So those are the things that, Mr. Chairman, if this committee gave me the opportunity, I'll focus on. Thank you. My, my second question. Honorable nominee, you were asked about how you can create employment for the youth of the region. And in responding to that question, you said that in your manifesto, you are committed to the establishment of one district, one factory, as a way of creating job avenues for the teaming youth of the region. But you know that production alone cannot create the jobs. People produce in anticipation of demand. So if you think that by establishing a factory alone, you are creating employment, I disagree. What do you think can be done to ensure that the things you are talking about that you intend to produce in your region, there will be enough demand for it so that as soon as you produce, you get people to buy, and that will serve as the biggest motivation for people to produce more as a way of getting a lot of people into jobs? Well, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, when I said that we have the flagship policy of uh, one district, uh, one factory, uh, one district, one factory, I did not uh, mean to imply that that was the be all. See, if you take uh, the support, the question that Honorable Ayaga put in, we have the universities, three of them, uh, Cape Coast, uh, technical university, you have the University of Cape Coast, and then you have University of Education, Winneba. That alone, if you put the figures together, close to 100,000, you have about 93 uh, senior high schools. And if we got even a factory that produces orange juice, as part of the policy of feeding them, and this is also important, part of policy of feeding them, that it must be some arrangement for every senior school 
to take the, 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 the orange juice. So there will be that big market there for them to consume. And that will get the forward and backward linkages going. Honorable Nobini, let me now take you to the office of the regional minister. I think you said three questions each. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Nomini. Hello. Come now. I want you to pay attention. Angro, congratulations. Looking at the CV, your background as a fisherman is not different from mine in Tema. We have, we have virtually things in common. Um, I recall growing up, a palm, Mumford, uh, is it Mumford, Mumford area, they have a high potential of salt production. And for some time now, there's no serious activity in production of salt. Looking at the hydrocarbon uh, nature, it's, it's going to do for us. So what are you going to do? Should you be giving this opportunity to serve as the regional minister? What are you going to do to make sure that you activate this sort of production within the Gumwa upper Manford area to really enhance job creation for the youth, apart from the one district, one factory? Well, Mr. Chairman, I think that it's not just Manford. It's part of uh, even Singa. And if you come to um, Fansman, uh, Kuntu, uh, if you come to uh, uh, Kei, uh, those areas, they all uh, mine salt. Uh, but it's always remained at the subsistence level. Uh, just uh, sacks are filled and then taken to uh, local markets. And so, uh, as and when, uh, the vim that is required to make it grow has not been there. But uh, with the petrochemical industry coming up, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, as regional minister, if you give me that opportunity, we'll see how we can uh, put uh, some investment experts together to see how we can succeed in growing the, the, the salt industry. And so uh, it is something that is very much on board. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, as a son of a grandson of a fisherman, um, Primix is a very important commodity in the fishing industry. I recall my big brother, Alote Jacobs, at one time said that the Primix in the region is going through a lot of problems, i.e. corruption, profiteering, hoarding, and all that. That led to the dissolving of sand landing beaches. May I know that when you are given this opportunity, looking at the experiences that my big brother said, you will make sure that you streamline the premium in such a way that every fisherman who is interested in going to fishing will have the product to at, at, at a very good price that is being given by government. Everybody will have the commodity. Then they go to fishing without any hustle or, or any challenge or difficulty. How are you going to do to make sure that fishermen along the longest coast in the country, which is the central region, are going to get this product to make sure they go to fishing? Thank you. But Mr. Chairman, uh, relating to premix, I think the major issues there are one, uh, the reliability in, 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 in supply and distribution, and then two, uh, affordability. Uh, you have instances where uh, some other persons get the product and then resell it to the, 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 the fisher folks at a, a higher price. So those are the two major uh, factors that uh, plague. Uh, the premium extent. And this is a commodity that if they don't have it, they are unable to uh, apply their, their, their trade. And that means that further, further, further poverty. 
the premise then comes on the Ministry of uh, Fisheries. But for as long as I remain there, if you give me the opportunity, Mr. Chairman, the regional minister, whatever goes in there, is something that I cannot say that because force on, sorry, force on the Ministry of Fisheries, I take a blind eye. Uh, it will be situated within the district. And as uh, uh, the chairman of the council that coordinates and monitor activities of the district, we would have to ensure that we work closely with the Minister of Fisheries to ensure that at all times the fishermen have it supplied to them and at the prices that it might be sold to them. Thank you. Um, well, let's close. All right, I'll give you one last chance. Thank you very much. Oh, what? Um, Mr. Chairman, if you permit me, in our tradition in infant swim school, I need to deal with him a little. Junior boy, stoop first before I continue. He That's do what? Been tradition. He knows, well, he not, not, what a, not, not uh, he in stoop. parliament. When you get out of here, <laughs> go and homo him. But here he's in uh, parliament. So you are refusing to stoop? Chairman, I'm at the direction of uh, chairman's... Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, congratulations. Um, I'm happy that um, not only as an infant being old boy, but also from Sabapiko, my house. Upper Dome or Lower Dome? Upper Dome. Upper Dome Prefect. Ah. So you took after me. <laughs> anyway, because of that, I'm going to uh, ask Khan all the things I heard about you. You said about Peace FM and Adumo FM. I'm not going to go to that area. I'm forgiving you yeah. for that. Forgiving the head of the <laughs> <laughs> But let me go to one important issue. Poor sanitation has led to perennial cholera outbreak in the central region and attendant death. I was at Nkamfua just about two weeks ago, and I saw what is happening there in terms of the landfill, poor management. And it's like it's happening all the time. On my way towards Kekum, I also saw it. Uh, is it in Suta or something, a town around there? It's, it's, it's a big problem. I've, at local government, we have a problem at hand resolving the issue of a landfill site in KEA. We are even in court. Sanitation has become a problem. Open defecation in the region, even in, in, some, uh, in some schools. Some of the schools are even doing open defecation in the central region. What are you going to do critically as a regional minister to make sure that the issue of sanitation is improved in the region to forestall the cholera outbreaks all the time. Well, Mr. Chairman, uh, his observations are well placed. Uh, before I appeared before your venerable committee, the briefing I had on uh, the annual outbreak of cholera is not something that, if uh, you gave me the opportunity to become the minister, something that I need to be enthused about. Uh, you had as just, just this year, and uh, we are told by the professionals that uh, it ended or it stopped just about two or three weeks ago. And they say that if within five days you do not have any report on that, it means that it ended. So it just did uh, about uh, two, three weeks ago. And uh, if you look at the statistics just for last year, uh, Kepo's metro area alone, uh, close to 5,000. 5,000 reported. Uh, fortunately, we did not have a uh, uh, debt uh, amongst them. Uh, but so it's a major, a major thing. And it's, it tends to serve as a center. So those who have come from the other districts, they come to pick it and send it there. And we were able, they have been able to trace it to where the real issue is about the uh, abattoir thing, uh, where it is cited. And again, the open defecation that you talked about. So those are matters that are firmly, are firmly on uh, the table if you gave me the opportunity to become the minister. I, I mean, the background that we have all come from, I'm going to place my eye there to ensure that we break its back. It's not something that in this uh, day and era that you'll be talking about cholera. 
we, 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 we are going to put all our effort in there to resolve that matter. Mr. Chairman, the coastal belt of the region is experiencing high level of erosion. If you go to Bore, my in-laws town, Yamuransa, and other places, it's really difficult. What are you going to do principally to make sure that the incidence of coastal erosion and erosion in general in the central region is dealt with? Well, Mr. Chairman, uh, the concern is, is one that also goes uh, deep to me because I'm also a coastal boy. And if we fail to secure uh, the coastal shore or the shore, what it means is that the erosion will keep getting in there. And that will pose challenge even to where our people find a uh, place to sleep. What happens is that in the night, you have these sun winners. What they do in the night when everybody has slept, that is when they go to win sand. And so by so doing, uh, just uh, the buffer which would have been there is uh, continuously removed. And so, I mean, I also had in the Regional Security Council, if you gave me that opportunity, every district that is identified with this problem, if we have to do a 24-hour monitoring, uh, Mr. Chairman, we'll do that to uh, secure uh, the, 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 the coast. Thank you. Come to the leadership. Chairman, I was uh, still doing some consultation to see. Okay. Kwamina Duncan, Chairman, let me wish him well and congratulate him as minister designate for the central uh, region. In my academic life, I chanced him in the Commonwealth Hall as a young undergraduate preparing for the world of work and the world of today. But Chairman, the nominee as I know him, today rather comes to me as some notorious absentee teacher with the record that I have. You go to FM in the morning, 7 to 11 a.m., probably school hours, school contact hours, uh, which the Professor Nana and co were fighting to reduce and improve people, people's teacher contact hours to, I'm sure I'm told, from 27 to 9%. With this record, how can we be assured that you will provide leadership in ensuring discipline and that teachers are at post and not running commentaries when they should be in the classroom. <laughs> well, Mr. Chairman, uh, I do not know how the ranking member, minority leader, uh, comes to establish this record. And because you know too well that in the senior school, you teach by periods. And, uh, Yes, you teach by periods. And uh, the day I find space to be on air is a free day for me. But I tell you, Mr. Chairman, I've been uh, the director of studies, evening studies, and also the senior house master in charge of studies and also at the academic site. Uh, if anybody made that effort to look uh, to my work ethic and then the discipline. Uh, I must not be here to be blowing my horn, but never in any way that my politics, my politics that I've done or keep doing, any way had any effect on the job, because that is what I'm paid for. And so I've had 
a clear distinction between the two. And as a classroom teacher, I've always committed myself to doing it. And that, in any way, has never suffered from the politics that I've also found time to do. Jawan, even as house master. Mr. Chairman, it's only Wednesdays that I come to Accra. Beyond that, all this, I'm available at school. You come, you find me. I'm through till 9 p.m. when studies are over, and then go down to the dormitory to ensure that all that is also maintained before I come back to sleep. So evening classes, which you are around for more than a decade, closes at 9 p.m. Is that the case? No, prep. Prep closes at uh, 9, 9 p.m. So I'm there. I'm in charge of uh, prep, and I make sure that they all settle. <laughs> and that's and that the young students who are looking for exits, you are available to grant it even on Wednesday as you are on the road. Mr. Chairman, in fact, the film is said that if one person is not there, uh, activities do not come to a stop. We have uh, we are four senior house masters, and we are all uh, charged with uh, several duties. And so on Wednesday, when I'm on my way, I mean, there are others who equally will step in to do the work that I must do. And nobody under such circumstances has suffered at all. Chairman, listening to the nominee, I trust that he has a diligent hand. But Chairman, listening to him, he relates to the central region and guided by statistics as one of the poor regions of our country. In his answer to an earlier question, he himself recognized that in the last 20 years, nothing has fundamentally changed. So he goes to the region, I believe, with the trust of the president to do extraordinary things, to ameliorate poverty, improve infrastructure, CEDICOM have not been able to live up to that. What are your extraordinary plans for the central region to get them out of the debilitating poverty? Chairman, I think he answered this question, uh, Honorable. He asked, uh, answered the question on what he would do differently. So if you ask another question. Chairman, I'm quoting his answer where he himself used 20 years, so it's not the same question. I'm saying that if you see a pregnant goat in the market, there's a pregnant problem at home. He has identified that Central Region has a unique problem. I want him to share how uniquely he intends to run the region. Nothing more, Chairman. Well, Mr. Chairman, first and foremost, uh, you come in as a team player. There's the one central vision that all of us, that His Excellency, uh, has given us the privilege to be part of his team, uh, will work around. That's the, the central vision. Uh, but you also come in uh, with that little on your shoulder uh, or up your sleeves to be able to give. And uh, poverty, uh, we have realized that as a party and uh, in going to the people in 2016, we said that we have uh, the uh, infrastructure for poverty eradication program and we seem we're going to implement that through the Coastal Development Authority. So that is a, a first tier, first layer. But Mr. Chairman, I've also emphasized here that we have tended to be so subsistence all this while. The, 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 the ability to take off is in there in the central region. You have the commercial crops and all of that. What, in my view, in my estimation, is that we need to get the needed investment there. So I emphasize that investment, investment, investment. That, for me, is the way to go to be able to break the back of the poverty that has plagued our people for all this while. Chairman, may I request the nominee, what plans do you have to use SEDECOM as a development institution to deal with the challenging social and economic deficit of the central region? Well, Mr. Chairman, Sedgoma has its own, its own problems. Uh, right from 1990 when it was set up and supported by the United Nations Development Fund for seven years, 
uh, to build their capacity, uh, thinking that once the capacity is built, they will be able to be on their own and uh, fund and seize. They have had their problems up and down here and there. Uh, but that notwithstanding, they have also done quite well in growing small and medium scale. And then also they have uh, their uh, enterprise promotion wing, uh, large scale investment wing. And so as uh, Minister, if you give me that opportunity, Mr. Chairman, uh, I'm going to focus and streamline uh, their main mandate, core mandate, which is to facilitate and to promote investment and growth of small and medium scale. So I'm going to focus on that. And I'm sure if that was done, uh, we'll succeed somehow. Chairman, the nominee is aware that the central region received, like many other regions of Ghana, a share of development interventions under the previous administration, notably the Cape Coast Stadium ongoing Kaswa interchange, many other community schools. You are reported to have said that President Mahama was reckless in his spending. Is that to describe this initiative or you meant something else? Well, Mr. Chairman, if the entire contest is provided me, then uh, I'll be able to give a, a satisfactory answer if the entire contest what do you mean by reckless spending by a president? Does that include some of the initiatives I identified? Or you know a particular spending that by your own conduct of an audit that deemed to qualify to be reckless? No, Mr. Chairman, I couldn't just have uh, stood up and say that the president is doing a reckless spending. Probably related to something. That's why I'm saying that. If I had the full context, related because, uh, to the energy sector, relating to the energy sector, uh, Mr. Chairman, unless I am uh, well reminded, I do not remember that I ever made such statement that uh, the president was making a reckless spending. Unless I am properly reminded, Chairman, may I now refer him to a publication? Mahama is spending like there's no tomorrow since Kwame Duncan. And uh, you are attributed to have said that. Do you, do you regret those comments? Or are you able to justify <laughs> what you describe as reckless? Uh, well, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, the, the heading there, the heading there, the heading there is... Uh, uh, Mr. President is spending as though there were no tomorrow. I never said reckless. Uh -huh. And then so on the basis that, yes, but see, the program is a cheap program. And yes, the person who may do the translation may put his own word in there. Yes, may put his own word in there. It's a cheap program. And you are forced by the host to speak cheap. So say you cheat how you said it. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't in a, a cheap program say reckless. I couldn't have said that. <laughs> chairman, chairman, I have the quote, and the quote reckless is attributed to the nominee. So how did you say it in cheap? Share with me in cheap how you said it. The president told them, I secure the cell number two anyway. At least uh, today, at least today, you appreciate that Echina <laughs> Waho. And that if there was, if there was Kasua interchange, there was a stadium, it was meant to stimulate the economy through investment in infrastructure. Do you now regret your, the association of the word reckless with you? Oh, Mr. Chairman, uh, this whole thing of uh, campaign is just like being on the field. Uh, you uh, appear to want to score. And uh, the position given to me 
by my director is to you, you go and then speak. You will speak for the party. Yours is to make sure that we as a party seeking to come into office, we look good and the other uh, looks bad. And so on the field, it's your duty to work. But I mean, on the field, occasionally you may be fouled. So that might be part of the problem. <laughs> is that part of the problem? Yes, part of the problem. Did you sleep? And I'm saying that, yes, I'm a part of the problem on the field. Yeah, so where uh, then, why there are injuries, uh, where then you get to be shown card. a yellow card or a red card? So do you deserve a yellow or a red card? In this case, give me a yellow card. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the injury is accordingly noted. Uh, may I refer you as my chairman? My final uh, question would be on page 66 of the MPP manifesto. Uh, uh, you probably may be lucky that he will cause another yellow and Chama will combine the two for a red card. <laughs> so pray for that. Chama, page uh, 66, I believe. The MPP promises the Coastal Development Authority, CDA. And you are aware that CEDICOM is already in existence since 1990. Will you advise against a duplication in the creation of these institutions? Well, Mr. Chairman, uh, there cannot be any, any uh, equivocation on the fact that if you decide to do uh, duplication, uh, your, your, your focus gets dispersed. And so it's important that for whatever you do, you get focus. Uh, but I know that the ranking member, minority leader, also knows too well that CEDICOM is not founded on any legislation. So I'm sure in coming up with this uh, uh, Coastal Development Authority, that may be premised on legislation. And when that is done, probably the role that CEDICOM may be made to play, either it is subsumed into this uh, uh, Coastal Development Authority, or it might be made to become a wing. However, it is couched we would ensure that we avoid this duplication thing. Thank you. Chairman, in wishing the nominee well, I'm sure I can share some nostalgic moments we had in Commonwealth Falls, where he, together with others, had uh, planned. One of our colleagues who, who later became minister was being impeached at the central cafeteria. And Chairman, when we conspired and got back, I was declared persona non grata, and that was my GCR president to save me out of the situation. On that note, congratulations. I wish you well. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You thank you. The people of Central Region well. Okay, thank you. Um, Vice Chair, do you want to say something? Mr. Chairman, I just want to, I want to congratulate my brother on his nomination by His Excellency the President. We met on a few occasions um, at the level of the party's communication team. And I'm also a regular listener of him on Kokroko, on Peace FM. He's still doing I hope he doesn't stop doing it anyway. Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. OK. Um, I'll make just two suggestions to you. The observation that you have so much, but yet the uh, poverty is still there. I'm suggesting that you identify the rich people in your constituency. And I see one sitting right behind you, one of the most astute businessmen in this country, your original chairman, all chip. Let him focus some substantial investment in agriculture in his area, and it will spread across. I see that Dr. Ndiom is doing a lot for, in, in the Amina area. Uh -huh. So get more rich people instead of building machines in Accra and Tema, let's focus and invest in the communities, and I'm sure you you go far. Thank you. Chairman, Chairman. The, the nominee, if Chief Magas was here, he would sing for us. <laughs> and uh, Egbert Fable is watching. You're, you're out of order. Oh, but, oh. but you don't know that there are many choir masters around the state. Oh, Chairman, <laughs> you are a very good... You are a very good choir person in the Commonwealth Hall. If you can share just one, 
that that will entertain this committee as we bid him as we bid him and wish him farewell to the central region. Thank you, Chairman. Levanda Le Kwa will not be uh, eligible to sing here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, normally, thank you for attending upon the committee. Uh, okay, uh, the chief whip will acknowledge uh, the dignitaries who came. Mr. Chairman, from the Central Regional House of Chiefs, we have Osajefo Kwame Akonu the Ten, Enyai Abasa Omani. Nana Kujokundia the Sex Edina Omaini Osabarima Uchibu the Sex Enyan Dinchra Omaini or therefore Afanqua the Ted Bremai Isiam Omaini Nana Ma Amisa the Ted Mankesim Omaihima Nana Mroba Dabo the First and Mabo Omaihima Mrs. Naomi Duncan, spouse of the nominee. Yeah. Ato Kwamina Duncan, Nana Kwamina Duncan, Yoko Duncan, children of the nominee. Yeah. Oba Payin Georgina Dazi, mother of nominee. Yeah. Mrs. Nyako Anaunti, Mr. Robert Kutin. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Robert Kutin, Central Regional Chairman of the MPP. Mr. Manfred Barton Odro, headmaster of Mpansetin School.